Hello. Hi there. It's Tuesday. Already. <laughs> it is. It's so fast. <laughs> it does come really, really, really fast. It surely does. For sure. Hi, nieces, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> it's really hard not to, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it is definitely hard not to. Yeah? I'll make it. We'll, 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 we'll be okay. Hi, Miss Shirley. Hello. So, uh, so yeah, I did some stitching this weekend. You did some stitching this weekend. Not much. I did stitching here. I was here a lot yesterday. Stay late. Mm -hmm. yeah. I didn't get a whole lot done this weekend. I had a lot of personal errands and things that needed to happen. So it does happen sometimes. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's that was a lot of what I had to get stuff done. But I was here that got a lot of stuff done yesterday. Probably be here. a little bit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's okay. Yeah, that's you, all right. You have your virtual yeah. event. I do. Yes, Thursday and Friday this week. Still have a few kits available if anybody else wants to join. Mm -hmm. Love to have you. And still have space in the following weeks. Yep. Um, so if you uh, need your kit shipped, there's probably still there time. There is still time for the following one. Mm -hmm. yep. So if, even if you don't, if you want to participate or if you don't want to participate. You just pretend. Yes. I mean, it, our no offense feelings taken. Won't mm -hmm. be hurt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nope. Yep. And ours come with everything. Mm -hmm. Stabilizer, Stabilizer threads, everything thread. that you need. Yep. Yeah. It is. Um, I haven't gotten the sample done yet. I'm really close. <laughs> really close. I have one piece left and then I just have to sew it together. So it shouldn't take I'm, too long to sew together. It should not. And I, I just have one square left to stitch um, and then sew mm -hmm. everything together tonight and I, sh I should be done. So um, it takes you a little longer to stitch it because you video it. Yeah. So. Everybody a bit longer. can have some video instruction. It's a good thing to have, you know, mm -hmm. always good to have that to fall back on. Mm -hmm. But uh, And you were doing spring showers? I did. I was working on my spring showers. I have the first two rows stitched. They're not trimmed yet, but they are stitched. And I was sewing mine together. Yeah. So um, I got some of the borders stitched. So I was thought, well, I can at least get it you know, mm -hmm. put together to hang it on the wall. Not on Monday. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, you just never know. No, it was it was crazy, but that's okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we uh, I got the grass put on, and then I got two I think two borders added in, but mm -hmm. that's as far as I got. It's uh, it's really cute. It's coming together. It is very. It came. To, it turns out mm -hmm. really, really. I'm so sorry. Dave was funny. He was, um, I was making the little, uh, the, the mushroom blocks. Yeah. And he's like, they're Mario mushrooms. <laughs> they are Mario mushrooms. He is not wrong. So yeah, that was, it was funny. But, uh, um, so yeah, uh, we had, I had a lot of fun stitching up those blocks and, um, watching them come together. And they're very cute. Yeah. Um, I already got to do that once. So Yes. Well, and I picked some, my own, I you did. It, yes. It's you... very similar, like similar colors. I just, I had an, an abundance of, I might have some fabric in yeah, my they, stash. They've seen your stash. So yes, yes they're aware you, you might have a little bit of mm -hmm. stuff to pull from. Yep. It's funny though, when you start pulling your own fabric. You don't you, have what you think you have. No, I have, um, I have all kinds of really cute, fun prints, but I didn't have a lot of background pieces that would um support the cute embroidery design so you do now i do now you took a whole like 20 yards of stuff. yeah <laughs> i was like what are you what are you cutting mm -hmm. i don't recognize what you're cutting for and she's like oh no this is for me mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah that's why i don't recognize it yeah, yeah i do like i don't i i do like to be able to just start the project at home so and not have to yeah. hunt right right and you know especially now because it's not, um, it, it takes a long time for me to come to the it's store. It's not right around the corner like mm -mm. it used to be, is it? No, mm -hmm. no, it used to be not. I, I was literally a half a mile away from uh, a shop, so it was really easy for me. Oh, crud, I need this. We're both yawning. <laughs> so, so sorry. Apparently, it's been a day. It has, I, uh, 
I was listening to the radio on the way in today and, and I can't remember what they, who they were saying. Um, I listened to Sirius. And so mm-hmm. it wasn't a commercial. Mm-hmm. Um, it was one of the, the, what do you call them? DJs. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And um, she was saying that, oh, it was a cop and somebody had yawned and the cop put a mask up over their face and, and yelled at, at them. Mm-hmm. And said, "You're those are contagious." <laughs> Put a mask up over their face. And yeah, it's the true, cop was though. yelling at them, and they thought they were in trouble because the cop was yelling at them. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it was funny. about a yawn. How that... <laughs> I was like, but they really are. It's like all of a sudden your brain's like, you need oxygen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so okay, yeah, it is definitely one of those things what? where once you start, then it's hard to stop. Yeah, I was here for about twelve hours yesterday, and then I went home and worked on my computer for another. So I didn't get a lot of sleep. Yeah. So yeah, I'm might be a little <laughs> a little oxygen. We'll go with oxygen, oxygen deprived. deprived. Yeah. We'll go with that. Yeah, that sounds a little better. But yeah. So uh but Jeff and I went and saw a movie this weekend. Aww. And we went out to eat. And yeah, so it was it was a nice weekend. But I like I said, I didn't really stitch. Um that one's not on. <laughs> Hopefully everybody can hear us okay. <laughs> All righty. Well, it's been one nobody of said, hey, can't yeah, hear anything. So I guess that's a... Lots of choices for sure. Um, but yeah, so we did that and well, uh, and I cooked. So crap. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. Nothing oh. to do with any of you guys. I promise. Just all me. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, did some personal stuff instead of sewing stuff. I drove in to Ann Arbor yesterday with Dave. He had just a couple of inspections and uh, went to Target and the pet place to get some pet food. It's harder and harder to get um, pet food at the store. So um, that's uh, interesting. But um, when I was at, I I moved, we were at Target and they had shoes and I found David's work shoes that he normally buys and they were like 90% off. So they were like $6 Whoa. for his like and in his size in his size for like his $120 boots that he likes. Um, he's like, why didn't you buy me more pair? I'm like, I'm sorry. They only had one of your size, but uh, I felt like that was a, like a great, that was I a feel, win. right. Every, I felt, win. I didn't feel like I was winning on the cat food prices, but I did feel like I won on that. So that balanced it out. A you you got to take the win when you can <laughs> find it, man. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. We went and saw um, Uncharted, mm-hmm. and uh, so we went out to dinner on Friday, and um, I got my nails done on Saturday after work, and then we went to Vegas. That sounds fun. So, yeah, because I had class on Saturday, so I was late when I got home, mm-hmm. I, and then Sunday I just had all kinds of stuff to run around and do. And, there's things that I've been putting on, off day. and it was just like, I have to get this stuff done. And so, yeah, by the time I got back and made dinner and it was like, then cleaned up dinner and all it, I was like, I can't start anything else. <laughs> I can't start sewing. It's too late. There was yeah. just no way. So hello, Miss Jean. So yeah, but, um, we are going to talk about some of the little buttons maybe that you guys don't normally push because maybe you don't know what they do or you don't use them very often or whatever. Mm-hmm. But there's a couple that I actually use a lot, mm-hmm. um, even if I'm not necessarily using them as they were intended. Right. Um, one of these buttons I use all the time. So I actually used it this morning. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did link the, uh, I, the icon chart the icon chart on our website. So we have a, like a resources yep. section on there, our references. There's no charge for that. You can download it. Even if you don't have um, a Solaris or a Luminaire, the icons stay the same across the board. Yep. So what they do will be the same. So even though you might not have that machine, you will probably have a machine that has some of those icons and you can always yep. highlight the ones that you see on your machine, which is a nice little um, reference. It's really sheet. nice to have that, you know, cause so one of these, I call nine squares because there's nine squares on the button. Mm-hmm. And we were like, well, what's it actually called? <laughs> we were like, no idea. Yes. We had to look it up to tell you guys what the button was actually called. Do you remember what it was? 
border. It was border function. Yes. And, um, and it's and not what I would consider I, the border function. It's not. There's another one that's called something else that I actually would call the border function tool. Mm -hmm. So we were both like, well, that's interesting. Okay. But um, we'll talk about those. But, you know, so, and, and I've always said when I'm doing a lesson or something, well, I call this the nine square button but I know that's not what its real name is, mm -hmm. but you know, so there's, there's things that um, we know lots of you have, you don't have to necessarily have the top of the line machine to have all of these different things that we're going to talk about today, but they might be a little bit more advanced than just your, I'm going to resize it. I'm going to move it up, down, over, rotate it, whatever. And then I'm going to stitch it. This is moving past those basic mm -hmm. things. So um I use that nine square feature sometimes to cheat. Uh, like if I want to do, uh, if you you can't do color sort when you have things on top of each other. Right. So I'll put them next to each other and duplicate them and then let it sort and then slide them over top of each other, um, which works. Yeah. So um, it's funny because I call it the duplicate button. It There is a copy button, but the copy button doesn't do this. No. So I... I don't ever it's, use the copy button. It's really like the old fashioned endless borders because you do have the feature of adding uh, starting and stopping points mm -hmm. in this, which is I think why where they came up with the border function sure. feature before we had the actual border, border feature, feature, which they call something else. Right. But yeah, so um, you're so welcome, Sandra. <laughs> So um, without further ado, let's let's flip just over. Um, jump in. Yeah. So I'm going to do my best not to hit this camera that's literally right in front of me so that you guys don't get sick as I'm, you know, going to make it wobble. So this um, little guy right here is the one that we have been talking. So you can't see my finger so much about it. That's literally got nine squares mm -hmm. there. I so think that's the one that we've been talking you about. You can probably reach in front of the camera without hitting it and, and be mm -hmm. more comfortable. Yes, but then I'd have to use my left hand. <laughs> Just you could still use that hand. I'm trying to make it easier for you. I guess it's not working. I'm sorry. Do you want your, uh, that no. do you want your pointer? But, <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I can point and no, then you can touch. <laughs> Remind me to tell you of, um, about that machine later. Okay. Not probably not appropriate. Okay. This. <laughs> Remind me to tell you that. Um, um, all right. So, um, where where did you think to start? Got any ideas? Well, I mean, I, this is the first part here. So uh, we've touched on some of these buttons before, but I think really quickly. Um, you want me to do the shuffle? Yeah, we can do shuffle that. and then size, move, rotate. So, like when I want to move something around. Um, I usually go to the rotate button because I have rotate. You've got both of the tools. I've got on there. the tools. Yep. So, um, you know, in, instead of going to the move button and then the rotate button, I typically just yep. always go to so rotate. What she means is if I touch move, which is up here, I get my move arrows down here, which of course means I can move what I've got on screen. Of course, I can do this, right? can do that on almost everything we've actually on everything we've got on the line right now. Mm -hmm. But um, these are going to be smaller, more precise movements. And the center dot is always going to put me back in the center of the hoop. But on the rotate button here, I get not only my rotate options, but I also get the move keys. So I get like kind of a bonus Mm -hmm. um, options at the bottom of the screen. So we definitely get um, a little bit more playing power in one button, which just saves us from having to toggle back and forth between the two. So because, you know, you got to have more options. Options are always good. <laughs> no doubt about it. So if we want to, um, you know, we can adjust um, and keep things however you want them to look. So if you want your upright feather because you know feathers always stand upright mm -hmm. you know in the back of your head because you're an indian or mm -hmm. whatever they mm -hmm. happen to be mm -hmm. feather not that yeah <laughs> didn't you ever put a feather in your hair when you were a kid yes but it wasn't like there it was like in the um it oh was you hung it down like yeah so braided we, we, in we you played know? indians i guess uh, as kids so we put feathers in your hair my uh grandma used to have peacocks <laughs> so we had <laughs> really big feathers <laughs> Actually, it wasn't my grandma that had the peacocks. It was her neighbor. But they came into her yard. Yeah, and so there was always, wander. they do wander. And they were so cool. 
They were not nice though. No, they're not. They're nice. not nice birds, but they're beautiful to look at. Yes. Anyway, so I'm I'm just prepping this for later so y'all can mm -hmm. see it. I've already resized this. So one of the um really cool things that is a little bit more advanced is the ability to recalculate while resizing. Mm -hmm. So we have talked about that before. I don't really want to go into that, mm -hmm. which I've already done. So um, this was a lot smaller, but I wanted you guys to be able to see it a little clearer on screen. So I blew it up a little bit. So being able to use that rotate key here gives you both your rotates and your move arrows all in one shot. So it just saves pushing buttons, which of course saves time. And we all know time, there's never enough of it. So nope. it's always nice to do that. Um, so the one thing that one of the things that I mentioned this morning when we were talking about what we wanted to um, discuss this afternoon is there is a really cool feature that's in quite a bit of the machines now. It's I couldn't begin to list which exactly they're in and which ones they're not because I'm not sure I actually know that. Um, multi needles, top of line. I don't know how far down it goes for the color shuffling. Do you know how far down? Um, well, I think it's actually in the new 3700. I think that it is too. But I think it's definitely in 8 by 10 and up, and then now the new 6 by 10s. Okay. I think that's in the. You um, think the that Stellar. it's in the, in the essence? I think so. It might be in the essence. It might not, but it's for sure in the Stellar, the mm -hmm. Dreams, those kind. Uh, I think it's in the Dreams. Mm -hmm. So let's tell you guys what the heck we're we're mumbling about. Mm -hmm. So inside of your. Um, thread color change option. So you got a little spool with colors. When we tap that, we get our options for different um, threads. We can change the individual colors. Some of us are really good at looking at a design and going, you know, I would love this design, but I want it to be in shades of blue or shades of pink, or I want to make a rainbow out of it or whatever. And we can figure that out in our head. Some of us, quite frankly, suck at that, right? So some of us need a little bit of help and our machines now have the ability to help us out in doing that. And that is what color shuffling right here is all about. And you've got different um, threads that you can choose from. So if I'm going to do color shuffling, I like to choose a thread brand, I guess, for lack of a better word there, that has um, a lot. And I, I have Floriani, so it's a brand that I know I could pull from out of my drawers pretty easily. So that's very commonly what I will choose. What I mean by that is there's 300 plus colors instead of 60. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's more colors for the computer to choose from mm -hmm. as well. When I go into color shuffling, it says that Floriani up here because that's what I have. And I have six colors in my design, which is where that number is coming from. And I can choose from a couple different types of shuffle. Do I want completely random? So literally whatever the heck it can grab. Do I want to go gradient? So shades of fill in the blank. Do I want vivid? So really bright colors or do I want soft? And you can kind of guide it in the which direction. Which one do you want to go? Um, let's go gradient. That's really right. hard to do. It is really hard to pick a gradient, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So here you can give them a guide. So you could say, I want reds and choose a red so that everything that you get would be different layouts of reds, or you can just let the, again, machine start. I'm gonna let that happen and I'm gonna click okay here in the bottom right-hand corner. So first thing we get is we get a bunch of different reds and you can kind of see a little bit, I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see a little bit more color, maybe coming off screen there, my bad. Let me tilt just a little bit. Can you see that a little bit better now? And not see all the cords that look really crazy <laughs> over there. <laughs> so you can see that we've got shades of the different reds there. At the bottom of the screen, which I just zoomed out that you can't see is the word refresh. When I hit refresh, I get a new screen and it's going to change those different things. If you see something that you kind of like, you can push the heart. So maybe I like this guy here. Maybe I do, maybe I don't, but I can highlight the heart there and that puts it in my favorites box. Because otherwise you lose them. Otherwise, if... so you actually don't anymore. You did originally. Down at the bottom of the page, I'm going to zoom back out now that I say that because, you know, down here we have one 
um, of two and two of two. So I can come back to my originals. Mm -hmm. I didn't used to be able to do that. But I believe that favorite stays even when you refresh. Your favorites, um, it will remember the favorite. Right. Yep. So that's what I meant. When you refresh, you lose your, you you lose these because it goes to something else. It goes to something else. But back, um, so before I had this, I had the dream. Mm -hmm. And on the dream, when you hit refresh, you lost whatever you had before. Ah. You didn't have page one of two, two. page one of four. So it four. just gave you one page. You got at a time. new page. So you either got what you got, you, you chose it, or you didn't. This is one of the new things that they added so that it actually remembers what it came up with. So you could scroll back and, and forth. But now you can also choose um, from favorites menus. So we'll go to the favorites menu in a little bit. I'm just going to click refresh here a couple more times. So now you can see that we're in shades of yellows, um, which I can't say I'm super fond of not really loving anything yet. Are you loving anything yet? Mm -mm. I'm not in love with anything yet. Oh, there's some blues. Mm -hmm. I kind of like that one. Let's go. That one's I like that one's not too bad. Well, we're going to keep going. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. So basically we can um, go through and just say, I like this one. I don't like those. I like this one. I don't like those. And you can continue to scroll through until you say, all right, I'm literally, I've got so many to pick from now. I don't know what. I'm, I Now I didn't get myself now, any. <laughs> now I, I don't even know where I would go from here kind of thing. So we could keep going and keep going and keep going. Um, I'm getting a lot of similarities here. I've got some purples in there now, but we're going to stop so you guys can get the idea of where we're at. When I click my favorites, these are the ones that I said I liked. So I don't have to remember, save it, and then go back and start all over again. I can just say, hmm, okay, so these were the ones that I kind of liked. Now, out of those, which one is my actual favorite? And when I choose that one, what color do you want? Let's do the blue in the middle. The blue in the middle, right there. When I select it, it makes it bigger on screen. So I can actually look at it and go, do I like it? Which would be set in the bottom right-hand corner. Or hmm, maybe not, but look at this. I can scroll through and see them all big screen. So I can really get a choice and really see what it is that I'm playing with here. So this was the one that we had up. I say, I like it. I hit set. And now I'm back to my original screen and look at here. It has changed all of my colors in my color stop list. And I don't have to now figure out what color is going to go where because it's Floriani and I have a drawer full of Floriani blues. It's given me those Floriani colors. Mm -hmm. I can just go pull out those colors and it's going to look exactly like what it is on screen. If I wanted that to be in um, random, it wouldn't have been shades of blues or greens. It literally would have been rainbows of colors mm -hmm. and it would just let me pick and choose from whatever it is that I wanted it to be. This is really, um, really great for things that are in a rainbow mm -hmm. kind of layout. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily work real well for something that looks like, you know, a person or right. obviously, right? So that's not going to work for everything. Mm -mm. Um, but something like this, that's just an object that you have varying colors in, it is so wonderful. And it takes the wow, you know, I thought that was going to look great. And then I wasted all of whatever that fabric or mm -hmm. and or thread because I stitched it. And I don't like what it came out like because mm -hmm. I thought I knew what it was going to look like. And I was wrong. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's not, you know, so I can lay out spools in front of me and see what they look like together. But that doesn't mean the design is going to look like the spools. Right. You know, sometimes placement the placement makes all the difference and when you have you know in here this one here is a really large amount so maybe i would have put the wrong color there and it would have been too dark or mm -hmm. vice versa or whatnot so being able to see that on there i just think is a huge piece and like i said some of us are really good at that and some of us need some help um and this is a huge huge thing that the machine can do for you um and again it is found underneath your spool with the little speak bubble of colors. So that is color shuffling. Mm -hmm. And it is just a, I think it's a great tool. So 
Um, I don't always use it because a lot of times I am following a color guide for whatever projects. Right. I feel like all I'm doing these days is Kimber Bell for the store, <laughs> but <laughs> um, it is certainly um, a wonderful tool if it applies to whatever it is that you're working on. Hi, so. Daddy. Hello, welcome. From Florida. I know, I heard it's wonderful down there. Mm -hmm. um, Jim came in yesterday with all of the quilts and he said it was just fantastic. He was like- We should be able to take our show on the road. I, well, you know, we we have sort of, except we haven't done it together. Mm -mm, we should just get in my RV and go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys, shop's closed. <laughs> We're going on a road trip. <laughs> We need to go check out, let's see, Kimberbell. Right. And, no, so many things. So many places we need to be. Hi, Karen. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so, so that is color shuffling, and that can be found under your thread color change uh, key there. So lots and lots of fun. Super easy. Let the machine do the work for you. Mm -hmm. So absolutely. Um, the other piece that we were talking about is the, I'm not going to call it the right thing. It's the border. The borders, which looks like nine squares, which is why I call it nine squares. And I'm sorry it's I bumped the camera. It. it, well, call it what it is, right? Right, it is a good name for it. Call a spade a spade. Right, it's much better than border. <laughs> <laughs> so when we push those nine squares, this is what comes up. Um, now if I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see those buttons a little better. So up here, we've got vertical and then next to it we have horizontal we have vertical selected and then down here you can see that with that vertical you've got a plus at the top and you have a plus at the bottom a minus at the top and a minus at the bottom if i switch to horizontal i've got plus left plus right minus left minus right so what that does is that allows me to add a design in those specific directions yes now i have a really big design on screen so one more second here bear with me i'm going to go back and i'm sorry i'm bumping the screen much easier when it's small <laughs> to, to to duplicate that out and play with it hello that's right otherwise it'll just keep otherwise it'll say it won't fit it won't fit yes i want to fit too big i want to fit <laughs> all right <Good>. so <laughs> she was talking um, okay, so we are back on the vertical alignment. So over here, I have plus on top and I have plus at the bottom. And lo and behold, if I hit plus on top, it adds one on the top. Mm -hmm. And if I hit plus on the bottom, it will add one on mm -hmm. the bottom. But what Super happens crazy. if you hit something now? On the top or the bottom? Mm -hmm. It's going to yell at me. Right. This is what it would have done if I hadn't made it small. Yeah. So it says right down here, pattern extends outside of the embroidery frame. So I don't have an embroidery frame on, which means even using my largest hoop, I can't put another one top to bottom that's going to fit in here no matter what I do. Right. All right. So um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to read them. I can read that. Aren't you impressed? I am impressed. <laughs> I forgot my glasses today. <laughs> so I'm sporting one contact. <laughs> so you just never know what I'm going to That's right. See. She's been like. I'm like, I'm giving everybody like the stink eye today. Because <laughs> I'm like, one eye, uh huh. It's, kind of, it's been an interesting day. <laughs> been giving people some odd looks. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to stitch multiples of something, mm -hmm. um, so that's when I am generally doing this. So right now I'm doing borders. Mm -hmm. So I am doing multiple borders in a hoop because I can. Right. And if I have to do more than one, why waste an entire hooping on one border that's generally going to be an inch and a half or mm -hmm. maybe three or four inches wide? Mm -hmm. I can hoop more than one at a time. This will do that for me. Yes. And the key to this button, which is what is my love of this button, is that it color sorts for you. Yes. So if I left this right here and didn't do anything else, and we've said we're ready to embroider, so we hit the embroidery key. Yeah. So we're all the way down here. And I say, I'm ready to stitch. If I see my color stops over here, wow, they're all blue. Imagine that. <laughs> 
well, that was well planned, wasn't it? So if we come over here, they're all different color numbers, but they look really, really similar. So sorry, guys. Let's zoom in there just a little bit. So we have 306, 306, 306. Then we have 3103, 3103, 3103. So what that's going to do is it's going to stitch 306, 306, 306. So we have single needle machines here, right? Mm -hmm. Most of us. Mm -hmm. That means we don't need to change threads that's correct three times for the same right thing and we also don't have to keep telling the machine to advance we don't have to, the to advance one. the machine so yep. that we don't have to do that it's doing it for us now earlier i don't know if you guys caught it sarah said something about overlapping yes so some of us have a button mm -hmm. that will color sort for us but if you overlap so if you had two designs on top of each other or they were touching each other, yep. it won't do that. So it will tell you it's unable to do that. It gives you a it rare says, message. It says that um, cannot um, cannot something or other due to overlap or yes. something. It uses the word overlap. It literally, so if this design was touching this design and it was the same thing, but they were touching, it wouldn't, the computer wouldn't do it. And the reason being is it wouldn't know where to layer. Mm -hmm. And so instead of making a mistake, it's just says, nope, not going to do it. Yes. No, nope, not going to happen. That's exactly what it is. So this is the computer's terminology of the border connect button. Um, I call it the nine square button. Um, you got it. Yeah. Um, so this is why I love this. So whether you're making patches and you need to make more than one of them, whether you are just doing two of something because um, they're going to, you're, why don't you just making two of something? It really doesn't matter what the reason is. I did a chessboard um, many years ago. So I had to make a whole bunch of white squares and a whole bunch of black squares and they had um, some really great embroidery inside each of the squares. And so I filled my hoop with all of the white squares. And then I filled my hoop with a whole bunch of the black squares and made them all. And I was able to do, I think, 12 of each because they were two inch squares or something like that at a time. And what it did is I spaced them all out. So we didn't talk about that. I'm going to go back a page so you guys can see what that is. So here is my page. And I'm going to sc scooch over just a hair so you guys can see that a little clearer. So here's where I can add and subtract designs. So I could also take one away. All right. So that's what the minus is, just like what it sounds like. But here is where I can space them apart or squish them together. So if I'm doing like a quilt square that I want more than one of, I need to make sure that I have room in between those designs so that I can add in my fabric and have my seam allowance in there with that excess at least a quarter inch. So I want each of those squares, if that happens to be what I'm multiplying out, I want those to be at least a half inch apart. So I can space those apart. And then if it's, hit one end of the hoop. I have move arrows at the bottom. I can recenter my design and then I can move them apart again. And I can keep doing that until I have filled basically my hoop. So now you can see that I have at least that half inch design, half inch, excuse me, between each design. And I can now be assured that I have plenty of space to add in excess fabric between each of those individual design pieces. So if these were individual two inch squares, I could then lay all of those out. Now that I have a row, I could make an additional row. So I can switch up here from vertical to horizontal. And now I can add to the right or the left. So I'm going to move this row over. And now I'm going to add an additional entire row here, but I only have to do one. So I hit one row 
and it duplicates my entire row because I've already got three there. So by adding one, it duplicates everything that I have on screen. And I can space those out if I need to, or I can make those closer if I need to. So if I wanted to have even more, I could get those closer, I could scoot them over, and I could add even another row. So depending upon what it is that I am stitching, how many I'm trying to fit in the hoop, this is a fantastic way to make sure that I am evenly spaced and I'm going to be all color sorted. So it's going to do color stop number one. I'm so sorry, I bumped the camera. It's gonna do color stop number one for each of these. And then it will go back and do color stop number two. So you don't have to change threads. When you're doing something that's an applique work or um, you need like batting laid, it would give you that placement line. And then in your hoop, you could cover the entire hoop up with your applique fabric or your batting. It would tack the whole hoop down at one time and then you can trim it. It is a huge, huge time saver. Not only because you don't have to go back and do them all individually, but you can trim everything in one shot and you don't have to cut those smaller sections off to do a two by two square here and a two by two square there or so on and so forth. You can just lay the entire piece over your whole hoop and do that completion for that, that whole entire section. It is just an absolutely wonderful tool to be able to multiply out whatever it is you're doing and get the exact spacing that you're looking for. At the top of the screen, I do have a size, of course, just like I always do. So right up here, I know exactly how much space that whole thing has taken up of my hoop. I can reset back to my originals. I can center everything in the hoop. So I always, when I am using this tool to multiply something out in my hoop, I always use that center button, which is the move arrows at the bottom, that dot in the center to make sure that I am using the center of my hoop and that I am not um, getting too close to one side or the other. I'm sure we've all had that annoying uh, kind of like clicking when the foot hits the side of the hoop when it's going up and down. Well, I don't like that any more than you guys do. So I always do try to center whatever it is that I'm working on to make sure that I have plenty of space. So that is how I use that nine square button. Um, and it is the border connect button that is um, applied here. If we are actually wanting to use a border, so let's say I am doing a tablecloth and I want to do either a cut work or even if it's just an intricate, nice um, monochromatic stitch or something all the way down the edge of it or all the way down the center of it. And I've drawn a line, so I'm gonna start at one end and I'm gonna continue all the way down, but it's something that I want to connect from one piece to the other. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here so you guys can see. I've got to um, find something here. I have no idea, I didn't plan this. So unfortunately I don't have a specific um, design selected. Do you know where there's a border design in here anywhere? Do, do, do. Hey, Ben, this one will work. Eh. That'll work. So if we were going to do this down, like I said, it might, might not be the one that I would pick, but the concept behind it is certainly going to work. Um, if I was going to stitch this down the center of a tablecloth um, or down the side of the tablecloth, whatever, it doesn't matter where, but I wanted to do um, an entire um, six foot tablecloth. An endless border. An endless border. I need to pull that one design, even if I'm going to repeat the same design over and over again, I just need to pull it into my screen one time. Mm -hmm. All right. So how I would do this is I'm going to... Um, come in here. I have lots of tools here. You use, you don't use any of these if this is what you're doing, do you? What do you do? 
I use my camera <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> and my projector. That's really how I do that on this machine. But um, you can use this. You can use that here. one. Um, and I think um, on this model machine, isn't the last button over there? Doesn't that allow there's you to another, put the there's arrow? There's another one. There's another button on the other screen. On the other screen. That I was going to show them. Yes. Is that what you would normally use? Yes. Okay. I was like, is there something else that you do that I don't? know? Nope. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Hang on. <laughs> so pull up your design mm -hmm. and get it all set and ready. So basically, you're going to hoop the end. So you're going to probably be using a water-soluble sticky, and you're going to have, I would draw a line wherever you're going to stitch. Mm -hmm. it's, if it's going to be in the middle, draw a line from one end to the other so that you stay on track of wherever it is that you're going to go. Yes. All right. And then in your layout tools up here, we're going to select that. We've got this button right here. This is where I find most people screw this up mm -hmm. is they want to do it after they've stitched. Yes. You, you have do. to do it before. before. If you don't tell the machine before you've started stitching that you want to connect this to something afterwards, it doesn't know. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to ask you once you're finished stitching, hey, mm -hmm. didn't you want to connect that to something else? Does, doesn't that look like a button to connect? It looks like a bobbin. It, I think it looks like a film strip. Yeah, a film strip or like a bobbin sitting sideways. It does kind of look like a plastic bobbin sitting <laughs> sideways. It I definitely doesn't look it, like a border connect. No. Um, but neither does nine squares. Mm -mm. <laughs> so there you go. So if you tap this, it basically just highlights the button. It doesn't do anything at this time, which is why I think a lot of people forget because they think something's got to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case. No. We're just going to align it. But it puts a little it thing down here. It does put it up on screen, but nothing actually happens in the hoop. You're not going to do anything fancy right now. What you're going to do is stitch this design wherever your first stitch out would be. So at the end of, I'm using a tablecloth as an example, mm -hmm. at the end of the tablecloth, you're going to stitch it all out. Once you have finished the stitch out. It's probably, if you rotate the design. We could do that. The, um, we could show them at least advance to the end of the design so they could see yeah. what's going to happen. Um. There's some stabilizer over there that's seven by 12 that'll work okay. and we can actually like line it up. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know if we have what we need um, underneath their cut. Or is it okay to use one of these? Of course. It's just stabilizer. I can always find more. <laughs> so we just have a five by seven hoop in the machine. Um, and I am just, I don't have any fabric over here at the moment, which is okay. We're just going to, um, Pretend that this is the end of our tablecloth and maybe, okay. So if you look at the little picture of us on the side, I've got a five by seven hoop and then we're going to pretend that the excess coming off the bottom is whatever we're going to connect to. All right. So we're going to ditch with no thread um <laughs> can we just we can probably just advance to like one of the last stitches or something right there's thread up here okay cool there's blue thread that'll work it'll be noticeable yep so um while she's doing that so basically what's going to happen is you stitch out just like you normally would okay and once you are finished, we're going to show you what's going to happen. So we're going to jump ahead to just the last couple of stitches of the machine, of the machine, of the design. You hate finding that button, don't you? It's just, it's just in, in the wrong, the spot. wrong spot for me. Yes. All right. So I'm just going to, um, so there's 800 stitches. <laughs> So we're going to stitch the last three nine stitches. designs <laughs> or nine stitches here. All right. And we have already told the machine before we stitched this design that we wanted to connect. So it pops up with this at the bottom. This will only come up 
if you highlighted this button prior to stitching the design. So it says, hey, we finished that specific embroidery. Is it okay to connect to the next pattern? And you go, yep. You go, yep, please. And it says, all right, don't do anything. Leave everything right where you've left it. You go, okay. Now, what do we want to stitch? So you could put in a different design if you wanted. It does not have to be the same as what you already had. All right. So what did I have? <laughs> this. Um, this one. Okay, and we rotated it. And then we tell it to connect. So here's the fun stuff. Yes. Okay, so this is where it's going to be a problem because we don't have anything to see it to connect it to. But um, what it's telling us is where do we want to connect the, the new design to the old design? Mm -hmm. It could be to the side. It could be to the top. It could be to the bottom. You can have that be literally anywhere you want it to go. All right. That's pretty dried up. That that didn't work. All right. So over here, we can move where that's at. So if you want it to rotate, all right, this is the one that we've already stitched. We can shift the position of the new design wherever you want it to go. So it literally can travel all the way around. So if you wanted it to go to the right, based on how you had it hooped, you could rehoop and have it go to that direction. We're going to put it to the bottom because that's how I have room. So, so be it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. So that is where we want it to go. And I say, yep, that's where I need it to be. So I tell it, okay. Now keep your hand away from the carriage. And it is now going to tell me to affix a positioning mark inside of that specific spot. And I knew that this was going to do this. So we're not prepared. Oh, I feel like I saw these. All right. So over on my hoop, uh, we are currently sitting in front of the luminaire. So we have a projector. It is projecting an image that looks just like this. That looks like the snowman stickers. If you have something with a camera, it would show you on screen over here and you would have to look on your screen and move your hand around until you got the sticker in the right spot. So it would show you on your screen where the sticker goes. Over here, I can literally line up my sticker with where it's telling me. Once I have it, I tell it to scan my sticker. It looks at it and says, okay, it's recognizing the position and then it will move on says, yep, I see you. And now it goes to the other corner. So it also takes into consideration rotating when you rehoop. Does it only work for machines with a camera? I feel like. I think on a machine that doesn't have a camera, doesn't it just stitch out like an arrow that I you believe, line up? I believe it will give you stitch lines. It gives you something to line up with, Mary. Um, it's uh, It's been a long time since I've looked at it. Uh, um, but I do believe it's still on your machine. Mm -hmm. It's just been a long time. Oh, sorry. The nice thing is, is literally your machine is telling you exactly what you have to do. So I know you can't see. I, I wouldn't do even, that. even if I put it over there, you won't be able to see the projected image. So it's not going to do any good to show you my hoop. It literally is telling me with a picture where to put it mm -hmm. um, and then I'm putting it there and then the machine is using its its eye to see it and recognize it so that when I'm going to rehoop it it will recognize 
where those are and know exactly where to pick up mm -hmm. to restitch the next one. Right. So that's what we're doing here is saying, this is where the end of my design is. Now I'm going to, so there's both of them. It's, it's seeing, okay, yep, you're straight or you're not straight or whatever. And now it's going to tell me, um, don't remove the, the stickers. The stickers. Now we're going to re-hoop and put the stickers at the top of the hoop instead of the bobbin of bobbin. Mm -hmm. You know, the bobbin of the hoop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great spot to be in. So once we do that, then it will again use its camera, its eye to find that. So I believe um, in Mary's case, you would take a picture of your hoop and attach it. And so we're doing this because this is what the machine tells us to. So when Lisa holds that up, you can see. So I have literally made my hoop look like the picture. Look like the picture. All right. And up here is where we had stitched. You can just see the couple little stitches that we finished before. And we put those stickers in and then we slid all that up and rehooped here. Now we're going to put that back in the machine and tell the machine that we've done that by hitting scan. It will look for the stickers. All right, so it looks for those stickers. It says, oh, hey, look at that. They're at the top of the hoop. There's one. And we got a happy face. That means we went up. Smiling is good. <laughs> There's two. Yay. That All right. Means we can so go. now it means basically, hey, you done good. Mm -hmm. Now we can embroider the pattern. So we are completely there. And you can look on screen. I don't know if you can tell. I am slightly tilted to the left. I'm not 100% straight anymore. That's because when I rehooped, I angled it just a hair when I put that back in the hoop. So the machine is going to take that into account and automatically adjust the pattern to whatever you did. Mm -hmm. So when I do it, I stitch that again. And it will let me restitch a third time because we still have that there. If I don't need to stitch it a third time, I just don't. Mm -hmm. I tell it, nope, I'm good. And I'm all done. Yes. So it's literally, I say it's that simple. It's not complicated. Mm -hmm. You follow the instructions on screen. Mm -hmm. The only other thing that um, I think is kind of out there and scary, um, and it's not here. It's actually as one of the main things that's on here. And it's a whole nother lesson um, in a whole nother day. And that is the border function that is built into the Solaris and the Luminaire. I don't want to go into it today because we'll literally have a entire, um, we, we would need the whole hour to mm -hmm. show you how that works. But it's this beautiful box right here. And that is wicked cool. Mm -hmm. um, it is a fantastic yeah. tool and it will allow you to do to a king size quilt now mm -hmm. um, with with the upgrade upgrade number one if you have a luminaire one and it came with that on luminaire or Solaris twos. Mm -hmm. So um, one of these days we'll go into details on those. Maybe I don't know that we'll do that next week, but maybe um, you never know. But that is something else that is certainly in an advanced um, embroidery skill on the machines, but, um, something you're not going to be using every day, like these guys, the same right. thing, but certainly, um, really, really great. And, um, I've used it many times. How many times have you used it much? Maybe five or six times. Yeah. I haven't done it. Um, I haven't done a large, large project, but I've done a bunch of little stuff. Um, you have to do some little stuff really to get the, to get the feel of how you do it, get the corner kick really. Um, that that's the only, in my opinion, really the only learning curve 
is uh, is mastering the little swing of the yeah. corners. And, you know, we've got actually quite a bit of stuff here that we've talked about doing owner's classes for. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, um, COVID has made that really hard because I would like to do that as a hands-on class, not a virtual class. What about you? I I would love to do it as a hands-on class. I just don't know if people will let their machines in to see us. Uh -huh. So, but... It's, it's just one of those things that unless you're following right along with us, your screen's going to be different than mm -hmm. ours. Exactly. You have to follow the same button as us, and, and it's one of those things. But we have, we've talked about it multiple times. We've got great ideas to teach that as an actual hands-on, even if your hands are at home and our hands are here, but it's an actual hands-on class. We've got some really cool, fun things that we've talked about doing, but... Um, maybe we can come up with something here that we can mm -hmm. show you guys for and Tuesday. When Jean comes back, um, we'll have an extra body on the floor. So uh, it'll be a little easier for us yeah. to have a complicated a class. A complicated class. Yeah. yeah. I think the like last we did time the welcome home thing worked that worked out, well. out pretty well. Mm -hmm. So so those are some of the little bit um, more. Maybe the advanced features. They're not really advanced features. They're just probably not the things ones that, that you use every day. Right, because they're not on all of the sewing machines. So you might not have known that you had those. But definitely, um, I, I use my nine square button a lot. Even, I mean, obviously I have to be multiplying something out. But even if it's just two, mm -hmm. that's the button I use. I don't use the copy feature. I don't hit add and go back and get it from some. That's the button I'm hitting. Um, because it color sorts for me and mm -hmm. I can space it exactly how I want. And it's just um, a very, it does what I need it to do. <laughs> um, yeah, it is a yeah. really nice feature. It will also color sort more than one. So if you have two items on your screen that aren't touching, right. two separate items on your screen, it will do the same thing when you multiply them out, which is, is a nice feature. So um, you can't always do that otherwise yeah fun for wrenching <laughs> fun <laughs> over no oh, no I mean, kind of <laughs> well we won't let that happen <laughs> we will only let him come in a couple of days <laughs> <laughs> yes all right so i think that is about it unless anybody has a specific question about something that we discussed um today i think that is about it um, those are three <laughs> things that you might not have known before this video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we worked really hard considering how unprepared we were. <laughs> it's like I said, there are things that, I mean, I don't use the border, actual border no. button often. I have used it, but I don't use it often because it's obviously not something that we do. Well, Every day. we also have, like, I feel like the older fashioned way of doing this where you just, you just get like arrows and you can tell the machine if you want the arrows to be at the top yeah. or the bottom or facing the left or the right is probably an easier way to do continuous borders on a machine, except for we have the camera and the projector. Right. So we can literally line it up um, on the money without any of those tools because we can put it in the hoop and make sure that it looks exactly like we, we want to do it before we stitch it. So in some ways, some of those tools aren't actually necessary. They make um, it seem like it's harder than they it really needs do, to be, than but it actually it's not has to be, but hard. it's not. Um, and they're, they're there as well for some of the other machines mm -hmm. um, that don't have all of those features. And because they're already there, why not include them on this one? Because it's already been programmed and right. it's already... Um, you know, all, all of you top of the line owners would be like, Hey, why do they have it? And I don't, I bought the top of the line. <laughs> right. Right. So, but we just um, have other options. We have more with, options um, to choose the cameras from. and the projectors, which is a little bit easier mm -hmm. to do and not hard at all. No, just no, absolutely. It just seems like there's a lot of steps, but there really is. They're not. And when you're trying to explain them. It sounds like there's it more sounds steps. like there's more than there actually is. <laughs> so hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, and hopefully that will um, answer a few questions for you. And um, that's what we've got for you today. 
we do have space left in There's No Place Like Home Kimber Valley event. That is this Thursday and Friday and or next weekend, Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. Available to sign up on um, the website or you can call the store. We can certainly help you out over the phone if you need to. Mm -hmm. If that just, you can't figure that out, that's okay. <laughs> Give yeah. me a call. Um, and, uh, oh, we didn't add that what? icon chart thingy. I did. Add oh, did you? It, okay. it is. It was actually on the the. the it was on the original post. On the original right? post. Okay. Yeah, there was a a, a link okay. right for them uh, to do that. So, okay. uh, I I got it ahead of time. This Bonus. Time. So it's in the description. It's in the description, in the description of the video for, the for today. Video. Okay. Yes. Fantastic. So there you go. I didn't know that. <laughs> a couple people had already downloaded it before um, we even started today. So yeah, yeah, so I was ahead of the game. It is there. Months. Um, it's under references. If you had it, can't find it, want to go get it again. Mm -hmm. There's a couple different things under there actually. So, Absolutely. Um, there's some great stuff there. So, have some fun. Push the buttons, guys. See what it can do. There's lots of really cool stuff in there mm -hmm. and lots of fun to do. Yep. See Bye. you next time. Bye.